welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first vlog in what feels like forever. I'm sorry there's been a bit of a delay in videos coming out but I am excited to be bringing you this one because it is going to be a fun filled one. Now I probably should have started this video about an hour ago but typical Tina trying to cram too much into the day I did actually go to the gym <laughs> so it's full steam ahead to get Banksy in, get him ready, and then we are heading off up to Oakhampton to the Grange to take part in the Devaku demo evening with Alex Bragg and the team at Devaku, Red Mills, and Equilibrium. Now, hopefully, some of you guys that watch the vlogs will be there because tickets have been on sale for the past six weeks and I'm told that over 300 tickets have been sold which is exciting but also a little bit daunting especially with how Sir Banksy was yesterday he was a keen bean feisty machine and actually even gave oh I've got a plaster on hence you can't see I was like why can't you see the hole in my finger insert picture here Tina um but yeah he gave me ouchie Oh, Siri doesn't understand me saying ouchie. Sorry, Siri. You don't need to understand me saying ouchie. But yeah, I am excited, but slightly apprehensive and slightly nervous now just because of how enthusiastic he was, to say the least. I guess you can never knock his enthusiasm, um, but yeah, it'll be fine, I'm sure. Well, Alex knows him now after having him for the week. When I went skiing, he knows him very, very well. And he has also very kindly said that if he has a bit of sting in his tail when we arrive, he will have a sit on him for 10 minutes prior to us doing all the arena familiarization and everything when we get up there. But currently, Banks is still in the field and looking like a traditional, typical Irish bog pony and nothing like a lean mean eventing machine he does look lean and mean but he's just hairy muddy and not looking that delightful so i'm gonna get him in get him as spruced up as much as i can within an hour because i need to leave in exactly an hour and 10 minutes and yeah see you when we get up there i'm gonna leave you whilst i get ready with a little bit of footage of alex riding him whilst he was away at boot camp and yeah I will see you hopefully with a before and after of what he <laughs> I don't know if I want to show the after red mills have very kindly sent me some products to spruce him up a bit with so we'll unbox these quickly then I'll leave you with that footage oh they can go in my lorry I've almost run out of those they are absolutely fab tack cleaning mitts we've got some medicated shampoo and actually i've been a very good girl i haven't bathed him that much well i haven't bathed him at all since before christmas um i've been making sure i use my grooming brushes as opposed to bathing him too often like i previously would have we've got some dream coat which smells absolutely divine from the carday martin range and some cantamane and tail oh my god <laughs> i will insert here now before we go to the footage how disgusting his tail looks once i managed to get him out of the field but yeah i'm gonna crack on get him spruced up thankfully nearly dropped that bottle susie is very very kindly coming with me i wasn't sure if anybody was coming hence i didn't start the vlog because i was like if nobody's coming i won't get any content so i won't be able to vlog but she very kindly is coming Ooh, two four two and means we do get to make a video and i'm very grateful to her and i'm very excited now because i was feeling a little bit nervous about going on my lonesome gonna stop blabbing gonna make sure i'm not late because that would not be very professional of me need to get there by three so that hopefully if he is feisty alex can have a little sit on him but here's the footage of a few snippets of whilst i was away skiing and then we'll revert back to my bog pony that hopefully i can spend an hour trying to make look like a five-star eventer that he's going to be in the arena with are they going to be in it at the same time i'm not sure but alex is taking quindiva his five-star eventer and mitch who was in the top 10 at the world breeding championships last year so it's very exciting he's doing a dressage demo on one and a jumping demo on the other not sure which way round and then giving me a lesson so stay tuned for lots of fun and hopefully educational content guys About 
to leave Already packing Come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away To a place where we don't know About to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for Take my hand, we'll make it somehow We can't miss out I'm done living life with the lights out Looking back, eyes on the freeway, Bonnie and Clyde, a classic cliche, we're on the run, this is what we waited for. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow, we can't miss out. I'm done living life with the lights out. Somebody has been having a field day, haven't they, Binks? Hopefully, uh, <laughs> this does the trick. Look at the state of you. I always put his food up really high when I'm about to shower him so that it runs down his neck and not over his head and into his face. But yeah, here's the tail, Look. legs. <laughs> <laughs> the true definition of an Irish bog pony, eh, Boo? Alright, let's see if we can work out magic. <laughs> you absolute beast! Don't you? Roll on spring and this mud drying up. Cause it's the way it goes and I will never know why you let me go Now for those of you at home thinking Tina a pre-wash earlier in the week would have been a good idea It's so muddy out there I don't think it would have Part of me is cursing myself and part of me is just thinking The majority of people's horses look this way at the moment so at least we're keeping it relatable and authentic Remember I was laughing In all the photos that you took But now it looks like acting Like we were fiction in a book Voila! Done did! What a transformation, Binks! I don't know who came off more wet though <laughs> Me 
or him, although your chin is still dripping. Shall mummy get a towel and dry your face a little bit? Because you're a bit grumpy that we had to do your face, aren't you? Hey? Oh, and a bit of mud in your eyes still. Right, we are good almost to go. Rug on, quick last rinse of the legs. Was going to think about chalking them. Probably not. He's going to have boots on anyway. Grab the massage pad because I know I haven't put that in yet. And then go pick Susie up. Bye, Reg. Move, move, move. Whee! Locked and loaded. Let's go. Are we good for time? Moment of truth. Need to be on the road by what? Oh, seat's far too back. On the road by one. Oh, the time's out on this, isn't it? <laughs> it's about 15 minutes fast. 13.09. 12.54. Positive vibes. All right, let's take Susie, send them all away. And off we go. Hope I've got everything. Feels like forever. Ooh, that's quite zoomed in. Wee. Since I last packed up the lorry and went somewhere important. Important, as my mum would say. Important has a tea, Tina. With my boy. He says, get moving, mother. Hey, you're on. Pit stop, but not for. Hi, Susie. Sorry, Susie's here. Yay! Hi, guys. Your little lifesaver, you. Doing makeup lesson now. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Can't go with no makeup on. Tina's makeup. And Susie is the queen of makeup. Yeah. That's lovely. I'll get it done for me. You do. The dream. Oh, look at that. Does so that feel good? It feels like. Oh, a little bit rough, but you know. <laughs> We're going in with the foundation. <laughs> look, we can't be. We, we haven't got much time. We haven't got much time. <laughs> we thought it'd be better to pull over and do it by the side of the road as opposed to do it in the car park when we get there. Yeah. When well, we should be unloading the horse, tacking them up for Alex to ride him. Like, oh, beautiful. <laughs> got to go down the chin. Don't forget the chin, people. Don't forget the chin. Look at that. Yay! Beautiful, beautiful. I need to replenish my stock. My foundation's nearly out. Well, I need my roots doing too. I'm seeing Leslie on Wednesday. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> We're just going in with a bit of matte bronze bronzer here, guys. Oh, Mac! This, this is not an ad, unfortunately. This bro oh, okay. <laughs> God, can you imagine that? I've been sponsored by Mac. That'd be makeup. the dream. Yeah, just yeah but I didn't put their foundation on. Oh, no. We've got a yeah. right variety. Yeah. Variety is the spice of life. Oh, I do like this one, though, as well. Hula. Oh, oh come on, Benefit. Macho. Focus. Focus. Yeah. It's only a, mm. I got it at the airport, it's only a mini. Yeah. Anyway, quick. Okay. And this brush is from Home Bargains. Two minutes, you said it would take. £8.99. Home Bargains. Ooh, we do like oh, it. You just told me about a good foundation brush. Oh yeah, that was from Amazon called a Kabuki brush. I Tina mean... will link it in the description <laughs> box below. <laughs> only two quid. <laughs> Mind my white tie. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to come every time now. I actually what? haven't seen what I look like yet. <laughs> yeah, a, a clown. <laughs> Rosy red cheeks. I'm going to give you some of my. This is also very good. Work. Sorry, Em, I'm stealing Susie every time to go eventing and then I'll have makeup done. <laughs> do now. She will kill you oh, if you. A bit more, a bit more. This is another MAC Refined Golden. Don't sell oh, it anymore. Contouring. It's brilliant. Right, she's got to do this. I do still need to look like me a bit, all right? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Not like going out. <laughs> you just want a little bit, though, don't you? Right, we'll much. give you the finished look, guys, when we get there. Otherwise, this vlog could be <laughs> more makeup than it is a uh, pony partying. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> it's a look like I've got a tan <laughs> in February. Oh, got it on the slopes, don't you know? No, it looks good. My ski coat. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Do we need to do makeup? What do we think? Mm. She got the job? Yep. <laughs> oh, oh no, I need cleaning. That's why I said about wet wipes. Isn't it nice though? Feel it. It looks like it's velvet. Oh, it's wow. Well. Isn't that surreal? Oh, it no, feels... I would have thought that was velvet. I know. I love it. And what, do you know what the name of it is? Uh, Lemure Puffer. <laughs> I think it's a leaner puffer. I'll insert it here. It was in the sale the other day, actually. It's nice though. I wore it at Prey. Didn't nice. wear it actually skiing, but wore it at Prey. Doesn't look like a horse, but I thought it was a nice, smart one for today. Oh, hi, nice. head. Your face needs a brush. Travelled well, good journey. And here, with plenty of time to spare. Uh, which is good, because, yes, his face needs a brush. He did have a proper bath. First bath this year, I think, wouldn't he? Hey? Should we put you in the stable? 
generally put lead rope in hand before I'm clipping. He's a good boy. Where are you? Oh, he's a bit cat hairy. He could have done with another clip, to be fair, but... With how spicy you are, I don't think we want you freshly clipped too, do we? Hey, Come on in. So yeah, 20 to 3, and Alex said if he can be tacked up, I'll kill up a little silt in further, so... We will let you have a 10 minute chill. What? This is that way. That way to the arena. Don't pretend you don't want to walk over that. Come on. Lipstick on me, didn't she? <laughs> Let's not have a water kiss. No rolling, baby. This will have a wee wee. Have a wee wee. Make it my bedroom. Yeah, but you're not wearing boots, are you? You know, things can change, aren't they beautiful? <laughs> uh, birthday wish list. Had a lovely Christmas present from you guys. Birthday <laughs> wish list. Boots. Birthday wish list. <laughs> Let's see how many of these tack cleaning mitts I can sell. <laughs> yeah. They went mad on Instagram. Have you got one in here? Like, yeah, they like, not. Oh, here. Yeah. They are so, like, I was actually shocked. I was just casually cleaning my girth away last night. And the amount of questions I've had no. asking where my tack cleaning oh, mitt is from. Da, 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 let's unveil it. There we go. It looks too good to use when it's brand new. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Isn't that gorgeous? And this is what you get with a brand new saddle. You get the balm, you get the <laughs> sew. Don't want to get bronzer on it. <laughs> Yeah, in its little own bag. Yeah. But yeah, it's so soft. And it's just nice because then you don't get any of it under your nails or anything, no. do you? It's No. And it's bigger surface area, yeah, so it's quicker. Just <laughs> lag it on. Yeah. But yeah, you can buy them individually or in the kit. Yeah, or in the kit. Yeah. Yeah. bag kit or individually. And I'll link it all below so that you've got yeah. direct links to the website. <laughs> Yay. Yay. But it does, it makes everything. I feel like a wheeler nice dealer. Wheeler dealer. Back yeah, the back, of back in my van. <laughs> <laughs> so we're making some goodie bags up now. We are. For are you doing, what are you doing? Like random, evening. random prizes. It, it's a random prize. Oh, and I hear Equilibrium are giving away a massage pad as well. They are to a random winner yeah. tonight. Yeah. Have they got to do anything to like win it or just? No, yeah. they're coming. Just, 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 just by, just, just by turning up. up and having their entry ticket. Yeah, they get entered into giveaways. Yeah. Lucky, lucky people. No. There we go. Fabulous. Don't put that brolly up anywhere near Banksy. <laughs> it might be drizzling, but we'd rather get wet than be across the other side of the car park. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got to bear in mind that I won't have this fleece on, but it's too cold to take it off at present. Although we've been lucky, it stopped raining for five minutes. They do have some very nice merch. Tina. All fingers and thumbs because I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited, nerves. I don't know. Do they have a medium? Uh, yes, I'm going to get you a medium. I think with the t-shirt, you want it to be fitted really, don't you? Do you think that's all right? I'll go and get you a medium and then you can try it both. Oh. I mean, it's better, but... It's fine, but I'm not going to have, I'm only going to have a base layer really underneath, aren't I? Yeah. And I like things, because with gilets, they often act for top tip, guys. Stop if, going like I can see you. If, if you're larger breasted. <laughs> I always find if I've got a nice snug gilet on it, like acts as like a second sports bra. Do you know what? You'd think your boobs are really small in that. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, maybe I'll keep this size and a medium might look too tight. <laughs> Okay, maybe I don't want medium. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. Did you know? That's better, I think. Yeah, you like more things, neat, isn't it? I like things fitted. Yeah? Yeah. It's a bit shorter too. And yeah, not gapy here. And like I said, I won't have a fleece on, so yeah, thank oh, you. And it's got double zips, so you can go it all. <laughs> Time is it? Oh, 
bring it in now. I thought it was only bringing two horses, not 20. Some Lorenas. Can you live it? Is that like a livable one, Tina? Maybe it's there tonight and needs the. Can yeah. you. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's not going to be able to go and park down where I am, is he? No. Oh, it's Nick Attract, too. I didn't even realise that. Same as mine. However, Equitrek, we would like that size. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next year, please. 2025. <laughs> Couldn't drive it, but... Oh. <laughs> Alex, like... just let you know, I've heard he's a bit wired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, otherwise I wouldn't have been enlisted to yeah. ride it. So I've got a really sore throat as well. Tight, like, yeah. I'm going to be no, not no, no, it's all right. We haven't caught it's it yet. It's not, it's not bug. It's you know, singing. Hey, you've been part. Oh, you're just about to holiday. Yeah, yeah, I see. We had a we have very, like, way better than we ever imagined. So that's why I have a very <laughs> sore throat. Get get it. It. I'll just get a jacket on. Is he oh, okay. nearly ready or? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Your cuss he is. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that'll calm my nerves if you get on in first for a bit. Yeah, fair enough. Well, once you've heard about a stable, I'll come pick you up. Thank you. I wasn't expecting to feel this nervous till today. Oh. <laughs> Did you know it's 400 now? 400? Yeah. Holy smokes, I was told 300. No, it doesn't matter. By the time you get over a few hundred, it's a lot regardless, isn't it? You're going to be an angel, aren't you, my darling? Positive vibes. I've got to stop talking negatively. I've got to talk positively. We know the power that it has on the brain and on the tension. Good, you are dry. It's warm because we had your massage pad on, didn't we? Good boy. <laughs> were, you, were you invited in for an ori tour? No, but I'm going to ask. You're going to invite yourself? I think Maybe. your followers would like it. And I it's think my followers would like it. And it's Equal Trek, so they'd really and like it. Trek. They would like it. Oh, it looks insane. I didn't see that at his yard when I was there a few weeks ago. Yeah. It's not the little one like mine. Sorry, Banks. I'm a bit rushing, aren't I? I should be a bit slower. Oh, the massage pad hadn't been on quite 20 minutes, look, because it's still vibrating below your feet. <laughs> I, do you know what? I was literally just going to say to you, what the hell can I feel on my feet <laughs> vibrating on my uh, foot? Good boy, thinks. I bet he says he wants his stirrup leathers. It's funny, isn't it? When you ride in certain stirrups, you get used to them. And I think he rides in flexons, whereas I ride in free jumps. The free jumps are brilliant. Yeah, you like them, don't you? I you say love you're gonna get them. Yeah. Oh. Right, I might turn that, might turn that vibrator off. <laughs> oh no, bit, keep on, it's quite nice. That's a bit odd in the background of a video, doesn't it? You're going to be an angel now, aren't you? And then I'll be like, here's like, what you're on about, he's wired. Oh, Thing is as well, with no jumps up, he will be an angel. So as soon as he clocked, it was good as gold warming up yesterday. And because we only put one fence out, as soon as he clocked that fence, he's just like, and charge! <laughs> like, no, you're meant to be being composed and balanced. Doing nice downward transitions. Not pulling my arms off. Rain off at the mill. <laughs> oh, don't, don't give behind the scenes of me rehearsing what I'm going to say. <laughs> or oh, do. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh. And then we, we ate the cornflakes. Yeah. <laughs> Did some taste testing. They're also the largest rabbit food supplier in Europe. Oh, oh fun fact I learned as well. I didn't even know that. There you are, you're paying more attention. Take him in there and lead him around. I'd say, yeah. It's going to be good as gold now because there's going to be no jump. I'm boiling. Boiling. <laughs> <laughs> Get lots of jumps.
jumps out. <laughs> A lorry, oh man, it's too... Sorry, Susie, meet Alex. It's, it's too, uh, too messy. It's too messy. We don't mind. Simone will absolutely murder me if we let you in. <laughs> we, and the pop-out's not going out, so... But maybe another day. Maybe another Come day. Come along to a show and then... Yeah. It's a big day. He's just um, nice and fit now, isn't he? Big day. Yeah. So I'm going to give him a chop round quickly. No, no. Thank you. Yeah. I'm good. Can you let me off? Come on. Off the lead train. Then I've got to like, organise all that stuff in a minute, so... Thank you. Oh dear. Did you have a good trip up? Yeah, it's fine. I don't know why I've never been here before. I've never been here. And it's so close to home. It's oh. oh, a long way for us. Oh my gosh. Is it not far from you? Should be about an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah. We're doing the introduction interview with um, Alex first, then Tina, and then Alex, while I'm interviewing Tina, yeah. then you're going to go off to your dressage, yeah. get on, get going, get mic'd up, yeah. okay, um, and then you're going to do the demonstration and there's an interval, or yeah. we can do the equilibrium with the prize giving. Look at the hairs, yes, yeah. there's no jumps. So that works, that actually, that works with me because then... It's so nice to see him riding, interval, isn't it? Yeah. We can then... Because what I'm going to do is not set the final jumps up at yeah. that end. <laughs> <laughs> because then we, we can have it free for the dresser. Um, Fab, so we need to go up to that little box there. Um, actually, it's fine. I'll go and get the mics. Yeah, you can come with me. Yeah. Um, we'll go find Dad. Is he feeling normal or cheeky? No, he feels fine, but... I think he's like, he's like, no, I didn't mess about with this man. <laughs> <laughs> this man's like booting out this like. <laughs> He's like, uh, actually, if, if I want half an hour to kind of get ready to be concentrate, I'll take half an hour. And I was like, I haven't got half an hour, mate. Like, you've got to concentrate now. So can you can you please like you just now, please? get on with the job? And um, so the, the first sort of day or two, like was was about kind of setting out the level of expectation. Uh -huh. And then he come out, and then it's just like a dream. And then I was like really playing about with him. I was like, this is quite good fun. And, um, he was the one thing he wasn't quite used to was jumping a fence and then turning immediately. Okay. So like he he was a bit like surprised by we that. We don't do that being nice. Yeah. No. Do. No. So it's like jump off turns. Yeah. 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 So I had a play with him doing that a little bit. Um, so he was landing a little bit instead of just landing and kind of just trojaning off. Yeah. He had to land and think. And actually, so that was really good for him to stay a bit more light on his feet yeah. after the fencing. Yeah, and to wait for your instruction and where to go, I guess. Yeah, and then, you know, then he was better in the contact because he kind of, he couldn't just, like, lean one way or the other because he had to sort of wait. So I'll give him a little counter on the right, but I don't know how much you want me to do with him because... No, I actually did end up riding him for longer than I anticipated yesterday just because he was so... Yeah, yeah. Why? I'll take him, I'll take him out. Yeah. There and then bring him back in for you so he's used to going out and in. Okay. Was that a good idea? And then... Yeah. The one thing I was going to ask you, which obviously because we haven't had a chance to chat since yeah. you, I got back and you went away, yeah. is I found yesterday as well when I was approaching the fence, he just kept doing the whole head flick, like trying to get me to get off his mouth. Okay. Am I better off ignoring his head a bit or making him keep it? <clears throat> and was that right from the beginning or was that. No, the more excited he got. Like when he was anticipating where we were going, what we were doing. 
He's so, like, I don't need you, I just want to run. Yeah, so I think in that respect, like that's what he was like when he, the first time he ju I jumped here. Uh-huh. And then, um, yeah, because you said to me, keep the martingale on him, didn't you? Yeah, because yeah. Because he does flip. I, um, I think um, you need to jump a couple of, like, go over some poles and a couple of smaller fences where you're not worried about the jump, yeah. but you're worried about just keeping him round. Yeah, yeah. Then once he gets used to just the discipline of being round, so you're using it as a cavaletti, uh -huh. and then when he's used to just actually the discipline of staying round and yeah. listening, then you just, to so the jump then, you can soften, yeah. Because actually, it's, it's, a, it's just, it's enthusiasm without discipline, yeah. which is like... Ends up being rude. Which, the, the trouble is with that is, it's not helpful when you do a course, so it's nice that they, they are keen, but you want them to, to actually do what you want them to do, so... Yeah, no. But yeah, so, um, but when we do our session, if it comes out a little bit like that, we can always start the session. Because no matter what you're doing, jumping or cross country, you still need the same level of discipline. Uh -huh. So, um, in fact, the faster you're going, the more discipline you need. Yeah, true. So, uh, yeah, so we, we, we can cover that okay. later and the, and the importance of it and the reasons for it and, uh -huh. and also when you don't have it how sort of vulnerable it makes you feel uh -huh. so I'll give them a, I, especially I, I, down steep hills at Victim ah uh, yeah yeah quite yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's like I don't need you then I'm not sure these guests have paid the tickets but <laughs> yeah. 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 we think it's yeah definitely I talk normally. Yeah, How's that? Good, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the green. Yeah. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, who's the mic? Me. Me. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, Alex, can you tell me what your horse is called, please? Uh, my horse is called Masterclass. Masterclass. Stay. Hey, he's giving us a masterclass in dressage. <laughs> Stay um, morning, Mitch. Mitch. Do you want to do it then? Well, do you want to pop your hats on? and have a ride of thanks, just doing flats so then you're happy with this. Okay. Yeah. I'll go and get okay. your hat. You have okay. your horsey. Absolutely. Yes, darling. Thank you. <laughs> a multitask. <laughs> this feels weird. Don't ride him at the boards. Try and ride him in the arena, if that makes sense. So when you come around the corner and concentrate on where you're going and look inside the arena, then he'll look inside the arena. Okay, so we need some music now. Yeah. Just when you forget where you're going, you end up aiming at the side and that scares them a bit. Yeah. And they hate, they hate pictures of horses, which is, I don't know what the, the irony of that is. Oh my god, I've never had a room where everyone's had to listen to me. I live in a house full of girls, like, I'm in charge, I'm in charge. Like, I'm making the most of this. I'm in charge, I'm in charge. <laughs> Tina's not even like that, she can't even say anything about that, like Tina. Uh, only the important people get microphones. <laughs> That's fine, it means you need to do the whole evening's talking. Uh, pardon, you don't come here in there, sorry. Yeah, you need a microphone. <laughs> um, okay guys, I'm just going to turn on a little bit of music. It's going to be in the background, so just pre-warned. Yeah, I'm ready to sing along. Get Tina a microphone now, come on. We're putting... We're we, putting... Um, duet. We're putting in a musical request right now, so everyone oh, yeah. well, at least, I suppose the duet that everyone would know has got to be Grease, doesn't it, really? So we have to have a bit of Grease. <laughs> Some are lovely, I've got my... Oh. <laughs> Having a breath... I'll help you out. <laughs> Met a boy, cute as can be. I can't do the high note at the end though. I've got a sore throat. I have a sore throat. I've actually got a um, better favourite duet song. Oh, which one? Elton John and Kiki D. Oh, uh, I won't go breaking your heart. <laughs> Got to see 
days to do Elton John. He's feeling oh. lovely. I want to give you a little something to say a massive thank you for tonight. Oh, I haven't um, happened yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, like, for coming, being part of everything, and literally just, like, love I having love you. you. <laughs> so that's for you. Um, just a little something. But, yeah, um, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm <laughs> so excited. <Ooh>. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is exciting too. <laughs> you know the ways of my heart. Thank you. Can I open it out? You said. You said I could do with a splash of something before going in there. <laughs> Sorry, it's not chilled. It feels quite cold. I know. Definitely drinkable outside. Uh, they are so handy, honestly. Hey, groom duty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you just like that look good on me. Yeah. Put your hat in. Put your hat in. Everything in it. Everything. The laptop goes to the back. No way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's going to be coming everywhere, aren't they, then? A nice, padded. Padded. It was <laughs> a nice protected padded laptop case. Thank you. You're welcome. Not too kind to, to me. Yeah, no. Let's go back, back to being on brand. <laughs> oh, you're, you're going to be literally plastered. Yes. <laughs> Green your door. socks, your Debbie QG, your hat, your yacht. You're going yeah. to be, you're gonna be That's so smart. Thank you very, very much. You're now let's hope it all goes to plan. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if I've said, but originally I was told that 300 tickets are sold. That seats five, oh no, total 500. So apparently there's over 400 people here. That's a bit nerve wracking. I don't normally, you perform in front of that many people many a time, but I don't. It's much more daunting when they're face to face yeah. and you have to make an introduction because a lot of the time someone else makes that introduction yeah. so it is very different but it's quite it's quite exciting and that's what we do, that's why we compete really because that's what gives you the buzz so this is very much like that sort of... I do feel like the adrenaline Yeah, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> you you, you ought to have yeah. seen her two minutes before this started, that was really funny too. So. But Alex is riding first on Masterclass. Masterclass, yeah. yeah. So Masterclass Mitch, who's a chestnut stallion. Uh, so he's doing a, a dressage demo. Mm -hmm. uh, well, a dressage demo to speak is actually going to be sort of like a, a flat work kind of um, tip session for people. Mm -hmm. How to get started, how to, to maybe uh, get them going, get the horse through um, and, uh, and avoid in the, the pitfalls of, of normally pulling your inside rein, which is, which is <laughs> the big pitfall for most Common people. Fault, <laughs> so trying to turn and get the, get the bend with the horse without using the inside rein. Um, and then do some flashy stuff, yeah, before we commence on to the next, next sort of like, uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. So Quindiv is doing the jumping. Yeah, yeah, well she's a good jumper. She, she's quite alert here today. She's very, yeah, she's a very sensitive horse, there's quite a buzz in the air. Um, and, and it's very enclosed, so it's indoors, whereas our sport for eventing is outside. So <laughs> Big open spaces. This kind of grows the atmosphere a little bit, um, so I'm expecting her to be rather electric. Uh, but she's got yeah. fans as well. So when she's coming straight at the public, I'm hoping nobody like decides to step up and use the bathroom right at that time because <laughs> she will notice and I might come flopping off. But um, but no, she's she's very athletic and, and we'll run through a few exercises and and hopefully jump jump some nice fences. He said over there. that the audience have to scream if they want to go higher. Scream if they want to. So we won't stop until they want us to stop. Basically. So just up and up and up and up and up. This could be this could be fun. With Quindiva, not Banksy. Not Banksy, yeah. So, <laughs> so Banksy can go under the one that Quindiva finishes at. Sounds like a challenge I'm happy to accept. Yes. 
part of the film. So we have here Alex Brown. Please, can you introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about your story, your journey with British Atlantic and how you got into today? Okay, so I got into eventing a slightly different route. Um, my wife was the event rider. Um, I actually came from rugby. Um, very different sport, slightly different body shape as well, so I had to work on that slightly. Um, but she fell pregnant with our first daughter, um, and her event was needed to remain to be kept fit. So she kind of let me have a go, um, gave me a few lessons. I had a then my first attempt at cross country, and I think that was when my love of eventing really kicked off. So all the dressage stuff, uh, I was a little bit like a gorilla coming from rugby, trying to trot around and look pretty. Um, but the cross country came very natural to me, um, and the adrenaline burst from it. And I think most people, if we're honest, we do eventing because we love we love that discipline. Um, and then. As I got a little bit better at it, and I mean just a little bit better at it, we were at some of the more top competitions and I noticed the same people were always winning all of the time. So I said to my wife, I said, these people that win all these big four stars and five stars, who are they and how do they win all the time? And she says, well, they're the professionals. I was like, professionals? And she says, yeah, you know, they ride for a living. I was like, oh, okay. So I thought about it and I said, well, why don't we do that? And she laughed at me. And so that was the challenge. I was like, oh, okay, so if I want to be as good as them, I have to start doing this for a living. And that's how the business and commercial venture started. And then as you get through that, you get better horses, you slightly become a better rider. Uh, and then your results start to improve. And, and that, that was the beginning of my story uh, into eventing. And, and now I've, I've had the pleasure of enjoying it for many, many years. And, visiting wonderful venues, meeting lots of lovely people. And here is something very different for me this evening. Obviously, the last month I met Tina, um, and I've been introduced to vlogging, which I think my children are very kind of like uh, adept to, but for me it's, it's very new, um, talking to millions of people that aren't in front of you. So I may be more comfortable at doing this in front of you than maybe in front of a, a sort of phone, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's really interesting for me and I'm um, trying to learn lots about it. I suppose it's my nature to try and just sort of, you know, learn as much as I can. We only have a little time in this world, so you make the most of it. Um, but here, hopefully, we have a wonderful evening for you where it will be educational, but also a little bit of fun. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks, Alex. And um, we're here with Deb this evening as well. So how long have you been riding with Deb so I've been with Nebuku for, I think, maybe like four or five years now. Um, in fact, when I first did my first five star, um, Nebuku were wonderful enough to come up and, and uh, support us. Um, and uh, the partnership uh, between us and them has grown and grown, and uh, they are like a, a family with, with Team Brad. Um, the, it's always great. You only really want to partner yourself with products that you really believe in and you, you really want to use. They're a, they're a quality product, which I was surprised they wanted to invest in me to begin with, but um, you've got to start somewhere. They have hope, they have vision, um, and, and yeah, we've been with them ever since. Fantastic, thank you. And here you are today, amazing. And here we are today, riding in their wonderful saddles. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully I don't fall out of one of those wonderful saddles tonight, uh, but you'll get a better look at it if I do. So yeah, absolutely. Somebody, can you touch wood? Thanks. <laughs> okay, so round two, Tina. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your story, how it all started with you and Lindsay. Well, a bit like Alex, I didn't start eventing until the later years of life. Maybe not quite as late as I started eventing nine years ago, so I didn't own a pony or have horses as a child. I didn't go to pony club or anything like that. Wow, that's amazing. I used to ride French ponies, borrow ponies, go for fortnightly lessons as a child, but wasn't fortunate enough to have my own horse till the age of 26. Wow, that's incredible. It's all about, you know, kind of working at the stables, isn't it? And then you get like a free ride at the end of it. And exactly. Everyone can probably relate to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They beg for a steal. Yes. <laughs> 100%. Um, so yeah, at 26 I got my first horse, and 
and then a few years later, I mean, in part of the in riding club activities with my first horse, and then I got Banksy, and he's the only horse I've ever invented. So, yeah, we've got a very special bond. We first started eventing in 2015 due to peer pressure from my best friend, Emily. <laughs> And we toddled off to, I never know if I pronounce it correctly, but Trebara, Trebara? I think it's Trebara. Yeah, yeah, I think so. We toddled off there in the August and we did our first ever BE. We had a horrendous dressage of 42 because he just went around like an Arab with his tail in the air, pooping and farting and barking and whatnot. Just being a heller, basically. But we went down clear. We did the jumping part. That was the fun part. And we got it. But the thing is, it's all about having fun, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's about having people enjoying it and, yeah. Exactly that, and I know that there are lots of competitive people out there. And I think my competitive nature has got a little bit stronger over the years, but primarily I do it for fun and the enjoyment of my horse. And since vlogging, it's meant that I get to also have incredible opportunities like this. So. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. And talk to us a bit about the vlogging. Like, how you come into that and you know how it went along sort of the story of eventing. Yeah, so I feel like I've really been vlogging like my whole eventing journey. Like although I did a few events in 15, 16, I didn't really become a full member or do it regularly until 17, which is when I was on the All Star Academy with Bruce and Country TV. Oh amazing. Yeah. Was that like the your your start of all of it? Was that like that's what made me first pick up a camera and, and go for it. Hold it in front of you some <laughs> filming or something. It just actually does sound so surreal, doesn't it? But hey, it makes me a living now. So can't complain that I get to combine my hobby as work. Well. But yeah, I started doing that. We had to make monthly updates for Horse and Country TV called the All Star Diaries. And the videos had to be no longer than three minutes long. Wow. <laughs> Well, I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to condense stuff down into three minutes was a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Um, so I took it upon myself to upload weekly to YouTube, and they were all like 30, 40 minutes long. Right. And yeah, six, seven years later, still doing the same thing. Wow, uh, it's been seven years. Yeah. Wow. 2017, 20, yeah. Fantastic. That's awesome. Amazing. So. You're with Delicu now, which is fantastic. And how long have you actually been riding with Delicu? Well, I actually first bought my initial Delicu saddle and chair letter for my old horse, Buddy, back in 2012, so 11 years. And then when I got back, I had it sent back to France, adjusted to be made wider for Banksy. Yeah. And that saddle is still in my tap room, it's going nowhere, it's staying with me forever. It's like a little a blanket. blanket. Yeah, it's a memoir. Yeah, yeah. love it. Um, but yeah, thankfully, very fortunate to have recently upgraded it to the Chiverton Lab. Yeah. And very pleased to report that Mr. Sensitive is extremely happy in it. Yeah, so. I'm going to say, so, you know, sticking with Debbie and that's what works for you. Is that kind of why you stay with that one? 100%. For comfort, balance, support, quality. Yeah, thanks, he's happy, I am happy. Yeah, fantastic. Lovely. And last question, what does 2024 look like for you and Magazine? Well, hopefully this year we actually do get to ride the badminton. <laughs> because last year, sadly, and I'm sure whoever follows me will know, we sadly didn't, due to a series of misfortunate events for Paul Banks, Mr. Sensitive. Um, hence, apologies in advance, guys, he is not coming out looking anything like Alex's horses. He has the hairiest, orangest legs ever. They are never ever being clipped again. <laughs> he looks like an Irish pop pony that he is, and he will stay that way because his health is the main priority. So. Absolutely. And how exciting. Oh, I'm happy to get that. Yeah. I mean, last year I beat the entry, didn't get there, so this year we will get there, please. You will get that. And you've been training with Alex as well, so which has been helping you, oh, you know, yeah. get the fitness up, the stamina up, and then obviously, you know, from these demos this evening, which you will see, you know, and then you're going to have a, a lesson. Um, yeah, so I've had a couple now, I've very much enjoyed them, and then very fortunate that he took Maxi in whilst I went skiing and did a bit of training with him himself as well, so it's nice that he's got to know him a bit better and his little quirks as well, that can then in turn help me to improve yeah. in my confidence and self-belief, because Maxi's ace, it's me that can often let him down. Yeah, I think it's, I think everyone, right, 
relates to that 110% when you have a little bit of a dip, when you're just like, you know, it's not quite working, and then you speak to other people, and it's a massive community, isn't it, where, you know, you speak to one person and say, well, actually, I've tried this, why don't you try that? And it works, it's about team effort, and that's what makes a great community. Yeah, definitely. And the support from all the followers and everything, it definitely, like, strives you to continue trying harder and wanting, wanting more from it. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Tina. <laughs> Hopefully, good timing. We, we are in good timing. Look at that. So, we have got Alex on a lovely, lovely walk down at the end there. Alex, can we hear you in your microphone? Train, so unpredictable becomes more predictable. And we all know with horses that they can start pretty unpredictable and they can maintain that throughout. So we have to create structure while we're teaching them lots and lots of new things. Um, so tonight, with, with this guy, he's doing the, the dress up, the flat session. And I thought it would be really interesting to to sort of start off with a simple exercise, but it's very, very effective about getting the horse to be through from his hindquarters into the rein and into the outside rein. And it's a, a few little tips for you because it's so easy to want to create the horse to be on the bit. Create the horse's frame with, with the reins and you go very much to the inside rein and that will create the horse to be a lot rounder, but actually he's not through. He's, he's actually carrying that shape on his shoulders. And we really want to avoid the horse feeding on his shoulders. For two things really, they're more athletic if they're right on their front feet. They're far more nimble. Secondly, if they're pounding on their front legs, you're going to suffer with more injuries. So if you can train the horse correctly, you can really keep the horse happier and working for much longer. So I've had a little trot round outside. Um, and I'm going to take you through an exercise uh, that I do with all of my horses, um, whether they're young horses or experienced horses, um, and it'll start us off and then we'll see how we sort of progress. So we're just going to start off in a really loose trot, and I'm not asking too much of it right now, but what I'm starting to do is I'm going to look at four points of my circle, because this is really important for the future, is that actually it's only going to become equally supple, so we're going to create symmetry and we can actually create control of where we're going. And it's really interesting, it's one of my pet hates when you see people riding around the arena, and I say, can you try and not bump off the side of the arena? Because they're looking at the horse like this, and then they're there, then they're like, oh my god. I'm just saying, you get inside the arena, and you're like, oh, how can the, the whole circle is now distracted? Because that's he's thinking, I can't just concentrate on you, because I've actually got to make sure I don't crash. So it's really important that you ride in the arena. So you keep the horse in the arena, and by doing that as well, naturally, it gives you the opportunity to start putting more inside leg on. So this concept of inside leg to outside brain. I learned this so much when I was learning. No, I'm not learning anymore, but what I was learning. But I had no idea what it actually meant. And I was like, I don't understand this inside leg to outside brain. I'm putting the outside brain more, and the horse is getting tighter and more tense. So then I was thinking about actually what you're supposed to be doing is actually riding the horse forward, and then he takes up the outside brain. So if we pop it into Canterbury. Okay, so. We don't want to be overusing this to make him out. Oh my god, look at it. Oh, he's on the bit, but then he's dipped his head, he's behind the vertical. We really don't want that because now he's closed his stride pattern down, and I want him to be really expressive. So, I'm on my circle, and I'm going to get rid of this inside ring. So, I'm going to put this inside ring into my outside hand. So now I'm not going to be the brains bracing the outside hand like this. And then I'm going to just turn him with the outside of him, and I'm going to ride forward. Forward. I'm just going to say, come on. I don't know, see that? <laughs> see him just shake his neck. He's like, oh my god, I've got a freedom to go forward. And that, all of that is him relaxing and going through his body. So can you hear him? I don't know if you can. He 
started to grunt a little bit, but that's that he's actually stretching through his frame. So I'm going to say to him, okay, now I want you to turn the wall in the forehand here, round and round the inside leg, and I'm going to keep riding with the inside leg. So he goes forward, 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 and I keep trying to stay on this circle which I've created. So all the bend that's coming in your body is going to be from this inside leg. If you get tired in your hand, just put your other hand on top and help turn like so. So I'm then going to say, go on. I want you to really feel that that kind of leg is super active, super forward, and you're really safe doing this. Even on a four-year-old, five-year-old that wants to buck, it's very hard to buck because it's always turning. So you can really get your leg on. And that's another tip because when your horses are fresh, it's that first event of the season. You need to be able to get your leg on. Okay, so so now I've decided that I can feel that he's starting to soften down here. The reason why he's softened to the inside is because this time leg is now pushing his shoulder. Up. So the mechanics have gone up, he's carrying himself there, so the inside ring is nice and light and soft. Okay? So now I can take up the inside ring passively. So I just want to create a contact to keep the bit level in his mouth. So I take up the contact, and then with the outside ring, I'm going to sit up, and then I'm going to ask him to just tiny, tiny little fill like this. Okay? Tiny, tiny. And I just breathe. Because I want to be really relaxed in my seat. And I don't want to use too much leg. I just got the leg there. Just in case he wants to break the trot. And if he breaks the trot, don't worry. He's making mistakes. Okay? Because at this stage, we're exploring new territory. And if you don't make any mistakes, you're not really challenging yourself. Mistakes are really how we were born to learn, you know? You jump in the puddle of that curiosity when you're younger and you get wet, then you learn. So you're like, oh, don't fancy being wet, don't jump in the puddle anymore. So it's exactly the same for horses, really. So don't be afraid of making mistakes. And if anyone tells you they're not making mistakes, they're dishonest. <laughs> so. Any questions? I must have been that good. Oh, we do, we have a take over here. Oh, thanks. The Auntie Susie's looking after you very well, isn't she? Hey? Well, it was a bit dark for filming, but Susie has made him the most delicious supper. Hasn't she? And sprinkled stud muffins on top for you, you spoilt boy. Oh, he's like, yeah, I love you. That is good. Do you like that? Oh, he's looking nice and relaxed now too. That's a positive. Is he warm enough? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You are warm, aren't you? Snuggly. Good boy. He'll pick those things off now and he'll yes, not leave the rest <laughs> anymore. I'll just have the stuff up in Oh, there. bless him. At least he's looking nice and relaxed. Thank you. Oh, leave you in peace, mate, and go back to the demo, which thankfully is literally just around this corner. In here. Number 151. <laughs> Yeah, it was, um, 
Thanks, Red Mills. <laughs> well, I will let you back on with that. I'm sure she is wanting to back on too. She is currently steaming. <laughs> yeah, no, she's very excited to be here. She yeah. is she's a very sensitive man. I mean, we brought her in to try and acclimatise her and stuff like that. She's been here a long time. She's suddenly getting the board, so I'm glad we're kicking off now. But yeah. she's, um, she's ever so talented. Um, we got her when she was rising six and actually never relented her until she was halfway through her seventh year because she just didn't decide it was it wasn't her choice to do it and we really had to wait for it to be her choice to do most things. Um, she's she's a strong willed mayor. Uh, so when she's on your side she's absolutely amazing but so you, you desperately want to keep her that way and not the other. Yeah. I hope Stubbornness and determination are exactly the same, just one's in your favour and one's not. So we try and remain a being determined. Yes, absolutely. It's great to actually see the two different forces, one being Sally and being like, yeah, no, this is quite nice, it's a chill, and then obviously you're there as well, you know, being like, wow, it's great to go and a bit more fiery. So it's quite nice actually seeing how, how you deal with that because I'm sure that everybody here has got a cause or two, you know, that sometimes can be a very good. Yeah, yeah, dealing with stressful horses is, is, is challenging. And um, one of the, the biggest tips that I can give you all, but in any kind of elite athlete sort of high pressure situation, is you have to re remove your emotion from the equation. So, and when I say that, it's so easy to get frustrated with them. And then in your frustration, you're not thinking consciously, and you, you have an effect on them. You know, your stress levels travel through from them, and then the whole situation escalates. So uh, you must remove your emotions from it. Um, you know, if she spooks or she does anything like untoward, which, you know, she may embarrass me. She probably would embarrass me. But <laughs> if I get offended by that, she, it's only going to be worse. Whereas if I laugh it off and say, actually, do you know what, that's her character, and go with it, I'm sure she'll reward me with something just equally or probably more amazing in the future uh, and that's how good she is and I have to believe in her and work with that relationship. When a horse comes to a fence, if you want to get the most effective and efficient jump out of the horse, you need to align its front end with its back end. So then when it pushes off of both hind legs, it pushes its whole body up over the fence. It can utilise its shoulders in symmetry and then give you the optimum jump. So straightness is what we've got to work to all the time. Then there's lots and lots of other things. Um, Nobody's got my so I won't go through them, I'll tell you. So then you've got your impulsion and your, your rhythm. Okay, so if you get straight and you have impulsion, seeing a stride is much easier. The horse can make adjustments front to back. So if you are straight, it can assess the jump, come in, either shorten or actually decide, oh no, I figured that out. I'll go on a slightly bigger, bigger shot. If you come in on the angle and you're still trying to turn your horse or hold it straight, you're restricting it. It's hard for your horse to judge and it's also coming sideways and the horse it can't shorten and lengthen in an engaged fashion to jump like that. So if you are straight, you will manage most of your issues in jumping that people are worried about. And then obviously you just need a big enough counter that will give you the energy to get over the jump. So, so I'm just going to come up, it's not a big fence, so it doesn't come very fast, but I just pick up my counter, and already I'm thinking about being as straight as I can, stay in the saddle, nice square turn, get into the middle, and then I put my left leg on. Okay, because I've come in off of so because I can't get off the right rein, and I want to land on my left lead. So for years and years I was told, kick the horse to the left, kick the horse to the left to get on the left lead. The only trouble is, is you kick the horse off the centre line, off the straightness, and unbalance it. So if you don't get the left lead, you've now got this counter which is totally unbalanced that you struggle to do it, and you're not going in the direction you want. So trying to figure this out myself, I then thought, but if I want the if I want the left lead, I've got to stop this shoulder uh, landing on this shoulder and leaning on this shoulder. So what do we do in dressage? In our exercise, we've got lots of that left leg on. 
draws this leg under, lifts this shoulder, which then she says, oh, I've got all the room in the world to bring my left leg out. So by keeping her straight, you're also using the leg because naturally on the, on the right turn, she wants to drift left. So you put the left leg on, straighten her up, she yields to the left leg, softens on the left side, and then you get the left lead. Well, that's the theory. So that's what we're trying to do. So I do lots of it to teach the horse to be very, very simple over the fence. And when a horse is a bit tense like this, you can use a small fence in the warm-up and do this six to eight times, so a few times of each train without taking too much energy away from them. But you can build on the canter and the softness over the top. So nice and straight, straight, I just make the turn, and then left leg. Okay, and she's straight, I got the left knee. She's obviously kind of spooky, she's very afraid of everybody. But so I'm going to wrap my left leg. So I'm going to try a little bit the left turn to the right. Just sound a little bit more in so. No? Um, this way. So I've got room to go right. Sorry, that's great. Thank you. Um, sorry about that. I don't want any injuries. I don't know. There must be a paramedic here, but I need mean, to drive the truck home. So. <laughs> so I sit up. Make a square turn, and then right leg, get the right lead. Okay, this way the horse is, is struggles a bit more, and I think I find it a bit harder, so for me I like to be a bit softer. So square turn, then left leg. Because that way she's much, she looks easier. I, I, I'm sure she looks easier, but she feels so much easier. What I said right at the beginning is about managing outcomes. If you ride to those rules and you're consistent, your horse will learn to jump. The fence is clear and open. If you can keep your composure, do exactly the same as show, your horse will do the best like it did at home to jump as many clear rounds as it possibly can. The trouble is to get consumed in a competition and the fence becomes the most important thing. Okay, but I'm not sure I even mentioned the fence in any of my operations. So I'll talk you through exactly what I just did. Well, not the one, not the bad one, but the good one. <laughs> so I'm looking there. Then I turn and I look down the school first, travel to my point, then I turn square, then I sight the fence and beyond. So I didn't really need to look at the fence because I knew that if I turned square at the right point to be straight, that my, the distance will come. Because the horse is engaged, the bottom's behind it. If you need to get to the fence on a slightly big stride, you put your leg and you find its hind ends in the right place to push and take you there. Or if you actually think that distance is good, you just sit there knowing its hind ends in the right place to make a good effort over the fence. So you've already done all of your work just by staying straight. So it's really simple, stay straight. <laughs> it is really simple. Honestly, I'm a pretty really simple guy, right? I can do it, so it's fine. Yes, yeah, it's very simple. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've, now we've worked out that we can be straight, what we're going to do now is we're going to set our holes up to try and make a really good effort all by itself, okay? So I'm going to I've set up, like I said, this, this little bounce, and it's three strides down to the octa. And that distance, you can slightly change depending on what you're trying to achieve or what size horse you have. Um, but we've set up on a slightly standard distance of about 15 yards at the minute, because it's in, inside. So she's quite experienced, so you could probably come straight to a bounce, but I would recommend just putting the pole on the ground first so the horse figures out where its feet are going to go. Uh, we'll go through it and then we can, uh, again, I'll talk you through what I'm trying to achieve, okay? So even now, I'm straight, right? I'm looking dead straight. Because I'm already setting myself up now for success. I turn and I ride straight. Then I look up at my line, turn, I get straight. Then I'm like this, like this. One, one, two, straight. Ooh, this is a bit spooky. So, 
Ya, pasti gue bisa tahu yang mau show apa yang mau dilakukan nanti juga. Dan ada sebab apa lagi juga? And then I stray, okay? Then I turn and I stray. So when I'm jumping, I am going to be always looking straight. So when I'm always on my seat, I turn and I stray. Then every time I turn, it engages a box. Then I ride off the box like this, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Thumbs up? I'm sure they will say yes. We put the hands up. <laughs> It's time, guys. I mean, Alex is currently doing some big fences on Quindiva and we're missing it because I need to be tacking up. I was quite enjoying watching. But that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> time to put my hat on, take my trainers off, tack the pony up, and get in that arena and put my brave pants on. Where did my gloves go? How I like they're there. <laughs> See? Knew it. So when you turn here, slight, slight roll back. So the, my tip is the tighter you turn, think the taller your body is. So as you don't lean in, think tall and away. Let the horse's shoulders move around the corner. So going to incorporate that into the sit sequence now. So I don't want to say it because it's embarrassing, but it looks straight. Turn and look straight, and then side of the fence, tall body, just tighten, 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 put it into the bounce. Bounce, bounce, leg on, take it off, let it jump, get my body up a bit, get the change, and then once I'm in balance, I told Tina Wallace after this, that I don't see how to test me, because she finished. And she patted her horse as it nearly stumbled around the corner. I was like, oh my god, you patted it for nearly falling out, Tina. That's not good. Wait until you're in really good balance and then really reward your horse, okay? So, um, that's one more tip. I'm nearly out of tips. I'm really giving you your money for there. I'm trying my best. So, we're going to have one more go at this jump. I think we've got one more go. Anybody want to see it jump again? Anyway, okay, we can jump one more time. So we got two more holes. See what happens. It's a pretty big jump now. Either or not, even though the fence is bigger, I think I'm going to keep my body a little bit taller. Although you might want to think I want to get across the jump. Actually, she needs to spend more time in the air. So we go up, across, and down. Okay, if I push her forward, she will across it. Then she'll knock the fence down. So I've got to make sure to keep my body out of the way, let her make the jumping effort, okay? So off we go. So remember, nice and straight, turn straight, tall body, put it into the bounce, press, press, leg, sit up, 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 up. Okay, so you actually now, we're going to make me fall off. You can tap. <laughs> To practice your lap of honor quite a lot when you're at home, so if you do, you really know exactly what you do. So. Okay. I've run you over, I'm not looking where I'm going. <laughs> My bad. Exactly the same principle, right into the corner with balance, turn, right him out, bang. It becomes a habit. And I kind of liken this a few years ago, people say, about the willingness of a horse, yeah, oh, he's so willing. But you can teach him her ability to accept to go forward. And then to someone else, you oh, see that she's so willing, I don't know. But you need to go to the next thing and turn it and have a way to go back. So he then anticipates, oh, I'm going to go forward. And then you can all of that into the shoulder of the horse. That's what he said about don't necessarily keep them on the bit all the time. Because you taught him that that's your expectation. So you can, you can mechanically replace the lack of willingness with a bit of your mind anticipation. Okay? Thank you. Yes, sorry. As in, 
as in he gets he spooks and gets distracted people. Spooks, gets distracted, just switches on. So, yeah. I'm a bit scared that my mic's going to be very loud when Alex says, I don't have to whisper. He won't make it a big one. That's fine. We like, we like loud people. Thank you, George. Have you checked with her? That's the first question. <laughs> That's what I asked. I thought she could have been So, um, Tina and I, we did one session together, um, just before Christmas, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then actually, Banksy came to stay at mine for a week, which was good, so I got to know him. And we had a second session, so we were very new about learning about one another. Um, and like I said, you know, but it's but it makes it fun because there's there's lots of uh, little pointers that I can give you or work with, and the sessions are more about understanding, discussing. So Tina actually takes away from the sessions stuff that she can go and work on at home. That's that's the important thing for me. It's not just about exercising your horse for 45 minutes, but actually giving you some knowledge to go home and, and utilise. Uh, and put it into practice really. And all the exercises you do, they're, they're there to achieve certain things and you can just use your imagination to freshen it up for horses. This is, wasn't exactly what I was going to do with Tina tonight, but because of the, the sort of time availability actually, I've just kind of like put something together, but it sort of will cover the same the, the same challenges that I would want it to, and it also hopefully answer a few questions that we got from the jumping uh, session uh, with dog legs especially. Okay, so just, just for you. I don't, I, otherwise, I thought question number five or six might come in there, so I'm going to get in there before you this time. Okay, so really important to make sure the horse is on the ace team is right, and yes, she's got the horse really, really important. Um, again, from a coaching perspective, I want as much feedback as possible from Tina, so she can give me as much feedback as possible from Maxi. So how does he feel? Does he feel nice and forward and relaxed? He does, actually, yeah. I'm feeling relatively surprised at how relaxed he's feeling. Okay, so he's never the professional, so he's not feeling stressed. And I said, I think that, that glass of champagne obviously helped you out, Tina, as well, because you look quite relaxed all day. So we're going to um, we're going to get the horse warmed up in a really basic way, and and remembering our non-negotiable, which is about picking the straight line and making sure he stays on the straight line. And when we're talking about cross country, it doesn't matter if you're jumping and horse, you can pick the line you want to go on, and that's your straight line. Well done, well done. And a good balance afterwards, this is back to the horse. I heard you, you can't. What a scene stuff.